The Second World War saw the use of many different rifles across both sides of the conflict. Some forces opted to stick with their traditional bolt-action rifles. Some moved into a more modern self-loading system. The US, for example, had the M1 Garand as their primary infantry rifle. But there was also another commonly seen rifle amongst US soldiers. The M1 Carbine, much lighter and smaller than the Garand, would also see widespread use throughout the war. But was it any good? In today's video, we take a look at the US Carbine Rifles of World War II. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, hit the subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. In 1940, the world was embroiled in a devastating war. As German blitzkrieg tactics demonstrated, the involvement of support troops for fast-moving armies was an important role to fill. These personnel who faced the risk of attack, but in some circumstances couldn't shoulder a full-sized rifle, needed a lighter and smaller option. Thus, the creation of the M1 carbine began to take shape. Designed to be shorter and lighter than the M1 Garand, which was the standard infantry rifle of the US Army, the M1 Carbine offered high power in close range combat. Its reduced size made it ideal for personnel such as MPs, medics, officers and other at-risk individuals to still protect themselves. Winchester, in collaboration with other manufacturers, proposed a semi-automatic weapon chambered for a new 30 caliber round. After beating out competitors like Colt and John Garand, Winchester's design was officially adopted as the US Carbine Caliber 30 M1 in September 1941. Production of the M1 carbine began right away and continued until August 1945, resulting in over 6 million rifles created by 10 main contractors. Initially, Winchester and the Inland Division of General Motors led production, but following the attack on Pearl Harbor and the subsequent US entry into the war, eight additional contractors were enlisted to meet the urgent demand for weapons. The M1 carbine fired a 30 caliber round, closer in resemblance to a pistol cartridge than a traditional rifle round. Its straight-walled case propelled the round at 1900 feet per second, providing an effective range of around 300 yards or 270 meters. It weighed only 5.5 pounds or 2.4 kilograms, so very lightweight for a rifle. Initially, with a detachable 15-round magazine, it would later be upgraded to a 30-round capacity. The M1 carbine offered versatility and convenience on the battlefield. Although initially intended for rear echelon personnel, the M1 carbine's practicality and ease of production led to its adoption by frontline soldiers as well. Its compact size and light weight made it popular amongst troops. However, as the weapon saw more extensive service, some concerns arose regarding its range and stopping power. Additionally, early sights lacked windage adjustment, affecting its accuracy. During its production run, the M1 carbine saw a notable variant, the M1A1 carbine, with its folding stock which was designed for paratroopers. Approximately 140,000 of these compact versions were produced. Manufactured exclusively by the Inland Division, the M1A1 carbine initially saw use by the 101st and 82nd Airborne Units, before eventually being distributed to all Airborne Units as well as the Marine Corps. Later in the war, upgrades were introduced to address some of the M1 carbine's limitations. A bayonet attachment was incorporated to account for the M4 bayonet, and adjustment sights were implemented to improve accuracy at various ranges. Additionally, a select fire switch transformed the M1 carbine into the M2 carbine, allowing fully automatic fire. Winchester and Inland were the sole manufacturers of the M2 carbine, while conversion kits facilitated the transformation of existing M1 carbines in the field. While the M1 and M2 carbines dominated the scene, a specialised variant, the M3 carbine, emerged with a unique feature, the infrared night vision scope. 
This variant, primarily used from static entrenched positions, was employed during the invasion of Okinawa and in other subsequent conflicts. However, the M3 carbine saw limited production and was not as widely utilised as its predecessors. With its reliability, portability and select fire capability, the M1 carbine became a preferred weapon amongst troops. Its smaller size and lighter weight offered a welcome alternative to the heavier M1 Garand rifle. Many soldiers praised its effectiveness at close ranges. There are even accounts of German soldiers having preference of the M1 carbine over their K98 bolt action rifle. However, overall most troops couldn't get past the M1 Garand. It had far better stopping power and a trained soldier could empty the 8 round clip just as fast as the carbine could. Despite some limitations, the M1 carbine proved itself as a reliable companion to countless soldiers, both in World War II and in subsequent conflicts like the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Its compact size, light weight and effective firepower earned it a special place in the hearts of those who wielded it. What did you think of the US carbines of World War II? Would you have preferred to be armed with a carbine over another rifle? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.